Hi there. Hello there. Are we going to get away a holiday this year? Can't say one way or the other, fella. Well, it's just I'd like to go somewhere special this time. Where to? The Grand Fromage. <gasps> Fly me to the moon. Mm-hmm. That'd oh, be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be something else, wouldn't it? Yeah. You know, Buzz Aldrin said in 30 years we'll be buying spacesuits out of sports shops. Would that be a good thing? Well, I think it would. Wouldn't you like to go? I'd love to go. It's just that every year on these holiday programmes, they always go, ooh, you don't want to go there anymore, you want to go here. Yeah, Cuba's passé. Ah, Vietnam's the place. Vietnam's the new black. Mm. You know, and then the moon ends up like, uh, you know, Blackpool. Blackpool. Yeah. yeah, it's everybody's there. <laughs> mm -hmm. You bump it into your neighbours on Lunar Avenue. That's right, and they're saying to you, have you been on the Big Dipper yet? Uh, we went down to the Sea of Tranquility, there's no water in it. Taking videos of it and sending it to Ann Robinson back on Earth. Aye. Plus, it takes you three months to get there. Maybe we're just as well with Greece and Spain and all those kind of places. Places we know. Ah, they've got the right attitude there, you see. Ah, the laid-back attitude. The manana attitude. I like all that. Yeah, it'd be great if Scotland was like that, wouldn't it? Oh, aye, that take-it-easy attitude. Mmm. At George Square in Glasgow, for example, or the middle of Edinburgh, you know, sitting there drinking cappuccinos, not caring a fig about what's happening. Pernos one after the other, talking about this and that, nice ah, and easy. But like the Latins, you see, we're argumentative. We get mm. any brawls and things like that. Maybe we'd be too tired to fight, though. Well, we may well be, eh? So, what's the scenario? A couple of tumblers get down on the floor, the barman goes crazy and then says, You! Outside! Tomorrow! Well, Jack and Victor have been working with their two teams of decorators all day, so now it's time to have a look and see what changes they've made to each other's living rooms. In you come, Jack. <laughs> Keep your eyes closed. <laughs> OK. Uh, uh, where's Victor? I'm here, Jack. Right, Jack. Open your eyes. Oh! Hey. Oh, my. That's fantastic. Is this the same room? It certainly is. What do you think? What do you think? I think it's absolutely amazing. Oh, the job you've done right enough, eh? What do you think of your new fireplace? What's that? Ah, oh, see, what we've done there, Jack, you see, is we pulled out the grill there, you see? Stripped it down and put in one of the eleven flame jobs you like. You oh, see, see you. Yeah. Aye, he knows I like the eleven flames, <laughs> that. I've always wanted... We've put all your medals and memorabilia in there, the copper frames there. So... Oh, that... I don't know what to say. Was that your idea? Yeah, it was. I, I, oh, I, that's I, lovely. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, where's my record player, my telly and that? Hey, what's happened to that? Ta-da! <laughs> Just inside here, Jack. You open this up and they're in this lovely mock walnut cabinet. That's absolutely marvellous. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm, 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 I'm close to tears, so I am. I'm not happy. That's beautiful. Thanks, Victor. Hey, well, hey, Jack. Well... Now it's time to go over to Victor's to see what changes Jack has made. OK, Victor, are you ready? Aye. Open your eyes. Oh, I'm fifty, you know. <laughs> Don't be bloody stupid, Victor. Open them up. <laughs> oh, aye, it's... it's... It's the same. <laughs> oh, nothing. Oh, come on now, there is a difference, eh? What difference? It's exactly the bloody same, Jack. You know, see what we've done? We've done hee-haw. <laughs> I even tidied my digest. They're still lying all about, look. Well, but that's the way you like them. I tried to tidy them up once before he went off your bloody head, so you did. You said you like things the way they are. They're still stirring the sideboard here. Yeah, he, uh, he has moved your wall unit there. Oh, is that it, eh? Moved the wall unit? Well, whoop de do. I can't even get seen for the van now. The wind is blocked there. <laughs> I can't believe this, you know. One bloody thing you've moved. You've made a horse's arse of that and all. <laughs> you? I knocked my bloody pan in, turning your room into your Hollywood palace, and what have you done here? Nothing. You're living in splendour. I'm living in squalor. But, Victor... But, Victor, nothing. <laughs> Holding you responsible, you arsehole. Oh, no, Victor. Here. Where's my wally dogs? Hey, they get smashed. <laughs> How? It's when they moved that wall unit. to live in the refuge. It's a long story, son. Aye, but how? Well, how can I put this? Once upon a time in a faraway land... 
No, never mind, son. Ask me some other time. Please tell me the story. Well, one day when the cow wasn't looking, the dish ran away with the spoon. No, just forget it, son. I'll tell you another day. No, Mum, please tell me the story. Because your dad's a wank. <laughs> right. You get to sleep so you don't feel the beasties crawling over your face. Hey, night, Mum. Night, son. Well, there. Sit down, sit down. What's your name? Hey, Ronald Villiers. And who are you with? Hey, where they come and pump. Right, Ronald. Now, do you know what the parameters of the job are? Continuity. Parameters? Yeah, continuity. Uh, continuity. Aye. Right. Aye, for, for BBC One and BBC Two. All oh, right, introducing the TV programmes that are coming on. That's right, right, yeah, yeah, but your job is to come up with a wee snappy link to take us into the next show. Right. Right, you, you can do that? Well, I have to come up with that? Yeah, right. yeah, just whatever you want, you know. OK. Right, we'll what? try one out, we'll right. try... Uh... What do you want it to be about, then? Well, I'll give you the name of the show right. and then you can... Jump the gun a wee bit, sorry. That's all right, you OK? I'm right. Fine. Try Can't Cook, Won't Cook. Right, Can't... Eh, what tends it right? Eh, do you want to know how to make stuff? Can't cook, won't cook. <laughs> right, right. We'll try it again, right? Right. But this time maybe... It was uh, no use. It was no use, right. no. Just try it, but uh, go for a wee bit more snappy. Something right. like, get your pen and paper and don your apron, it's time for can't cook, won't cook. Get your pen and paper and don your apron, it's time for can't cook, won't cook. Uh, that's what I just said to you. Right? No, you just parroted me. You've oh, got to sorry. make your own up, you right. know? You've got to come up with your own one. OK. OK? Right. Right. Right, OK. Um, do you, do you want to make omelettes? They're making omelettes on can't cook, won't cook. You can't it be so specific? <laughs> can't it be so specific? You know, yeah. omelettes. All right. They're not always going to be making omelettes, no, are they, Ronald? No, they don't. Can't cook, no, won't cook. That's you know? right. Maybe steak or beans or. Could be anything. Right. You know. So you can't. Like you can just keep it vague, different. right? Try, try uh, right. neighbours. Yeah. Hey. You watch neighbours? Right. Australian soap. I don't watch it. Well, you will be if you get the job, though, won't oh, you? Right. Obviously, ah, I right. watch it all the time. Try again. Try neighbours. Right. It's made in Australia. And it's on every week. <laughs> Neighbours coming in the, the, just now. Right, right. <laughs> Sorry. Um, maybe try something like, you know, um, Will Helen get to the shops in time right. and Bouncers had a bad meal. Right. Yeah? Right, right. Bouncers had a, a dodgy meal. <laughs> hey, what was the other No, one? listen, listen, right. Try, uh, try uh, Tom and Bob have had a surfing accident. Right. That's what's happened in the episode. OK. So give us the link. Right, Tom and Bob eh, have had a surfing accident, but their legs are their legs are in the right mess, but they'll be OK <laughs> next week. Yeah, what are you doing? What? You can't give the plot away like that. All right. You know, it's not your job to reassure the viewers, right? I'm only the continuity guy. Exactly. You, you know, they, 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 that's why they have cliff, I'm, cliffhangers I'm, and soap operas, you sorry. see? Sorry. To bring the viewers back really next sorry. week. I'm sorry about that. So just... Right. Try the news or something. I'm in Australia. <laughs> no, in Scotland here, Ron. Sorry, Scottish news, right. Hey, oh. What, the stuff that's been happening, right, to hear about this, sit down, Here's co here comes the news, just now. <sighs> hey, they're not making any omelettes in the <laughs> neighbour. Oh, you useless freak. <laughs> Continuing our season of tartan briefs, set in the post-war garbles, a bleak, austere tale of tenement life, Lindsay's Lavey. <laughs> Keep your eyes shut. They're shut. Keep them shut. They're all shut. Right. Yeah. You ready? Mm-hmm. Eyes shut. Come on. All right. Open your eyes. Oh, Alec, it's beautiful. <laughs> My beautiful, beautiful lavy. Oh. Oh. Can we afford it? <laughs> Tartan briefs. Don't worry. We don't understand them either. <laughs> The landmark case of Brian Williamson versus the Dolson Electrical Appliances Company was delayed today after the sabotage of an in-court demonstration. Williamson, 24, is attempting to sue Dolson for what he alleges to be the provision of a dysfunctional microwave oven, citing a faulty timer switch. He complained in court that the appliance must be knackered, as it takes pure ages afore it goes ping. When heating, they wee chip hangs. At the required setting, Williamson claimed the appliance failed to reach the end of its cycle. Dawson countered with a study stating that 80% of single men lose all sense of time when confronted by snack food in a microwave. <laughs> Lord Justice Campbell then placed a packet of microfries in the offending oven and the timer was set at two minutes. However, with the independent timekeeper stopwatch reading only 90 seconds, Judge Campbell lost all patience and removed the chips. <laughs> the case continues tomorrow when the jury will hear evidence concerning a king rib in a bap. Jeremy Black, Kirkcaldy Sheriff Court. Come see, boss.
Ja, 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 well, I've been there for fags last night, you know, and you know how you can never actually get into the garage at that time of night? Aye, I hate that. You've got to talk through the wee windy. <laughs> what would you know about talking through the wee windy? You never get out the car when we go out the garage. No, but I've seen you doing it. Oh, she's seen me doing it. Never actually done it yourself. Carry on, George. <laughs> Aye, well, anyway, <clears throat> I'm shouting for the fags and he's away and he gets them, and I think, oh, crisps, I'm shouting for them and he's away again, you know. And you know how they're always so grumpy? Aye. Aye? <laughs> Aye. Aye, what? Aye, they're always grumpy. And, uh, and then I decide I need batteries, you see. And uh, what I do is I say... How would you know <laughs> if the guy's grumpy if you never get out of the car? Carry on, George. Aye, well, anyway, he's none too pleased with you, cos I'm a wee bit pissed, you know. <laughs> I stumble back over one of them big bags of coal they've always got, you know, stacked right where you're standing. Aye, coal light. Aye, coal light. Uh, wait a minute, George, excuse me. Was it coal light? <laughs> Aye, something like that, you know. Fuel stuff, bags, briquettes. See? See, fat. You said coal light. Aye. Ah, but George wasn't sure whether or not it was Colite. But just to be polite, right, and just to make you not look like an idiot, George says, aye, it was Colite. Then he has to go back in his own word and admit he didn't know whether or not it was Colite. But for you, it had to be Colite. Now you've got me talking about it, why don't you just shut up for two minutes and let the man finish his story? Carry on, George. Nothing. He got fed up with me. Wouldn't serve me. Told me to get lost. Classic, George. Classic. Davy, Hold on, there's something in the back of the truck. Hello, Bobby. Oh! Oh, for God's sake, Mum, what are you doing in there? Well, it's been a couple of months since you've been to see me, so I thought I would just come and see you. You could have been killed in there. Ugh, the way you go, it's not that bad. A wee bit smelly. No, no, I'm in touch with me, sort of. I saw that Marie the other day. She's a lovely lassie. Where did you ever let her go for, eh? Should have made you a fine wife. Listen, I've made you a wee steak pie. Luke's got a wee face in it. Remember when you were a wee boy, you used to try and make that face? Oh! <laughs> Your face with all the plukes and everything. Ah, you weren't the really one for the lassies then, were you, Bobby? Ah, uh, you were more interested in things like the victor and the warlord and the shooty. And look at you now. Stand in there in your working lands, please. Mind you, they're a bit smelly, I know. I bet Marie could sort that for you, too. Why don't you get a wee phone? Get a wee phone and invite her room to mine. I'm all up lunch. I'll open my tin of A and B roll. What do you say to that, no? Oh, but listen, I'll tell you another question. When am I going to be a granny? Every night at the bingo when I'm there, they say... Here, yeah, what is it, Bobby? Eh? The back of the truck? Ah, it's nothing. It's nothing. It's all right. On you go. Because I can't answer that question. <laughs> oh, take another wee drap there, Gary. Oh, here, another wee caramel log as well. Oh, I'm not Rab Haw here. Oh, Rab Haw, the famous Glasgow greedy girls. Well, I had a bit of a pig out myself at lunchtime. Full lunch menu with wine at Pierre Vitoire. Oh, fancy. Was it nice? Oh, it was gallus. The vinaigrette on the salad, the lamb with the roasted vegetables, the creme caramel, and the chardonnay utterly gallus. By the time the cappuccino come round, I was like fat Bob out of Willie. <laughs> Tell me now, Gary. Did you swallow the hail bottle of chardonnay? Oh, heavens no. It would have been steaming boats. No, just a half <laughs> bottle. But anyway, on the way out, I couldn't resist a bit of the Glesky banter. The waitress said to me, will we see you again? I said, not if I see you through the windy. Oh, <laughs> delightful. Mm, well, she seemed to think so. I distinctly heard the reply, aye, very good. Oh, <laughs> the gallus Glasgow banter. <laughs> Sir, you've got a bit of paper stuck to your shoe. Nice boy. <laughs> <laughs> Now, we've got a bit of a problem with this next thing, the uh, bottled beer, Finbar. The sales are fine, it's just that the client wants to run a competition. And, um, you know, big prizes, that kind of thing. Yeah, well, that's going to be tricky. I mean, they've spent all this year's advertising budget already, and it's gone. Sorry to interrupt you, gentlemen. Here's your tea. Just uh, bring it in, thanks, Agnes. Sorry, John, on you go. Well, we've had scratch cards, flyers, posters, beer mats, and, of course, all the rest of it went on the TV ad campaign, so that's gone. Well, what are we going to do? Any ideas? Um, um... Self-liquidating campaign. S sorry, were you, were you talking to us? 
And um, that's milk and one for you there, Mr Dixon. No, no. What did you say there? Um, a self-liquidating campaign where the revenue generated from the ad campaign pays for itself. How do you mean? Uh, excuse me. Uh, sorry, John, actually, excuse me. Agnes, go on. Well, say, for instance, we're in a competition through premium rate phone numbers branded on the side of the product. What's it called again? Uh, Finbar Lytale. Aye, aye, Finbar. Calls cost 50 pence a minute. The ad agency's end of that's 25 pence a minute. So the money you've got there you can use to fund the printing of the labels and uh, any television promotions you need to kick off. Well, I was actually going to come up with a self-liquidating campaign because... Your ass! <laughs> You're fired. Agnes, I love it. It's brilliant. Sit down, you've got a job effective immediately. John, Agnes is the new head of promotions. You're the tea lady. <laughs> right, what does everybody take, then? Black coffee for me, please. Uh, milk and a wee half sugar for me, thanks. Right. Now, uh, Agnes, the, um... Company's hoping to move down to the wharf later on in the year, and uh, it's going to cost us a million pounds. The bank is prepared to stump up five hundred thousand. The directors are going to put up two hundred and fifty thousand. Now, along the same lines as your self-liquidating campaign. <laughs> no thanks. Any thoughts on how we could raise the final quarter mill? Oh aye, raise crispy cakes. I'm sorry. You can buy them in Safeways, but you can make them a lot cheaper yourself. All you need to do is get rice krispies, big slabs of cooking chocolate, and you make up the cakes, and you sell them at church fets and jumble sales and that. <laughs> um, right, Agnes, um, get your penny back on. You're the tea lady again. John, give Agnes a penny back and sit down. Oh, that's clear. Does anybody want a snowball? No, not for me. No. <laughs> Hi, look, mate, I know you don't know me anything, right, but I was just there uh, passing there and I'm wondering, have I got a donut in my face? Aye. Aye. Where? Here? No, the other side. Oh, other side, aye. Here? How's that? Aye, sure. Cheers, mate. <laughs> That's the thing about the manana attitude. What's that? Well, you get to have a siesta in the afternoon. Oh, they're lucky so-and-sos, aren't they? Yeah, they take three, maybe four hours in the afternoon. It means they can boogie on down all night. Freeze them up for the entire evening. Yeah. Yeah, you see, I get jealous of that manana thing. Yeah, so do I. It seconds my chicken. Sleep gets in the way for me, Ford. When I see places like Las Vegas and New York advertise and they say, come to the city that never sleeps, mm. I think that's no use to me, because I need to sleep, really? as does everybody. Yeah, that's the thing about Vegas and all these other kind of places. Mm. You get up at 2 o'clock in the morning and the place is exactly how you left it. How much do you need to sleep a day? Well, they say you sleep a third of your life, right? Mm -hmm. You go the entire 75, you leave, you, you live three score years and ten, so you yeah. sleep a third of that away, gone completely on sleep. Wouldn't it be much better if you could sleep it all in a wanny? Do your whole third in a wanny. And then you can stay up for the whole rest of the time. Well, that'd be fabulous. Well, I'll tell you what, then. If that was the choice, I'd sleep the first third. You'd sleep from zero to 25? Yeah. Well, that would be no good. Huh. Well, because then you'd be waking up 25, you can't read, you can't write, you can't speak like a big baby. Oh. Plus, you've got to get breastfed, which at 25 is uncool. Oh, it'd be a bit messy, eh, in front of your pals and stuff. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'd choose the last section. Oh, I don't think that would work. Well, I'd say the first two sections, your bones are good, you've had the good first 50 years, and then boom, out you go. Yeah, but the thing is, you only live 75 years, so mm -hmm. you sleep from your 50 to your 75, then you wake up only to find out you're dead. And you couldn't sleep in the middle section. How? Huh. Well, because you'd be on a date with some girl, and then bang, you fall asleep right in the middle of your date. How's this? Ten years on, ten years off. No good. How? Well, what if you're having a career or something? Then you've got to disappear. You're out the frame for ten years, your career's gone. You're washed up by the time you wake up. Nah, you've got a point there as mm. well. A week on and a week off. A week of sleep, a week awake. No good. Why? You couldn't follow the soaps. You'd be waking up and the soaps would be all out of sync. You wouldn't know what was happening. Oh, and you wouldn't be doing anything except watching what you've taped. Exactly. Uh. Smaller sections, I think, are the way forward. Yeah. Eight hours a day. Eight hours a day, every day? Yeah. yeah that would probably work. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, feedback! <laughs> What's warm in here? Boiling. Hello. Didn't you notice you coming in there? Good afternoon, Janet. Have you met before? Come, come. You don't remember me. Well, you do seem familiar. Anyway, what can I get you? Have you any Paris bun? Yes. Have you any Empire biscuits? Yes. I have cakes. I've placed you. You're the devil, aren't you? Oh, Janet, how good of you to remember. It's been such a long time. It surely has. So that was, um... Two Paris buns, two vampire biscuits and a knife for cake. <laughs> a hungry big demon, you. <laughs> Janet. 
tell me about the pies. Quite a bit of the pies. Oh, come, come now, Janet, let's not play games. You do love the devil, don't you? Of course. Then tell me about the pies and remember, I'll know if you're fibbing. Sometimes, before the lids go in the pies, I spit on them. Oh, no. <laughs> Big greener, right? In the <laughs> and the brideys. The brideys. <laughs> Peed on them. <laughs> Tell me about the sausage rolls. I've never touched the sausage rolls. Honest, I have never touched the sausage rolls. Okay, I'll take two sausage rolls as well. <laughs> wink, wink, good guy, good guy, wink. Well, that would have been a Tuesday night. Tam rolls up in a navy blue zephyr, I remember that. You see, it wasn't everybody that had a car in the days. Anyway, he shuts the door and walks up the close. The lads are there. Still kicking into Peter. That was an hour they'd been at it. But no, Peter didn't gee up. Still breathing he was. And he was hardly stuffed Peter right enough. Well, I drag him out and sling him in the boot of the zephyr. Close was covered in blood and guts. I remember that as well. Because it was our Mary had to clean it, you know. She found an eye. Anyway, next thing we know, we're all in the core, you know. Heading up to the quarry to dump poor Peter's body. <laughs> Sammy's sitting in the back, he pipes up, he said, uh, Here, Tom, what are we going to do? He says, If uh, this body's discovered, that'll be us snookered, you know. Tom, quick as you like, right into the hip pocket, pulls out a pair of pliers. So when we get out up at the quarry, he's on top of Peter, snapping the teeth out, snippity, snip, snip, snip. <laughs> uh, he's double wide, Tom, right enough. No dental records, you see. <laughs> Do you know, to this day, Tam still go all oh, the teeth in a wee leather pouch that he keeps in his belt. Now, you can hear them jiggling a boot when he walks. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a racket about. I don't know, I was just telling him a story there on his bust. I don't know what's in there. I've had him up too long. That's what you're doing. Here, Tony. Aye, what is it, Wally? How long is it we've been working together? Too long, you monkey. Oh, no, man, turn that in. How long have we been at the painting? I don't know. Two years, how? I'm not sleeping at night. How? Well, it's not a job as such, you know, it's the extracurricular activities. Here, you. You messing Irene about? No, turn that in, man. I'm talking about the stuff we get up to, you and me. What stuff? Painting? No, no painting, you know. Well, see, every time we're on a job, right? You always want to go rummaging. Rummaging's a perk, Wally. See, when you work for a big firm... Aye. Right, well, they give you a car, right? A big rover, something like that, for nothing. It's one of the perks. Well, see, we don't get that. We get to rummage. <laughs> see, see, see I, I don't think that's right. Look, Wally, it is a good given right of the painter and decorator when the occupier of the premises is absent to go to and through wardrobes, cupboards, bathroom cabinets, under flare boards, behind pickable locked doors. It's just one of the unwritten rules, you know what I mean, man? One of the unwritten rules. I know that when you explain the terms and conditions of employment to me, Tony, but we've done every house we've ever worked in. And the problem is? I don't want to do it anymore. Look, Wally, if you gee up that right, you'd be as well hanging up your roller. Does this get any day with the Shireen Nanjani job? Why? Can he stop thinking about it, Tony, you know? Ever since we found that sexy gear in our house, you know, I, I can't even watch the news now without <laughs> imagining that. You know what I mean? Look, Wally, sit down. You're a young boy. I've been at this lap for 14 years. Every painter and decorator gets a guilties in their first TV job. Aye, right enough. You know who mine's was? Who? Lena Martell. Oh, no way, man. <laughs> What'd you find in there? <laughs> you do not want to know. <laughs> Here, Tony. You know how we met, right, and you were painting my house? Aye. Well, did you rummage through my stuff? Oh, come on, Wally. 
Get a rest, as if. That just would not happen. No! Oh, sorry, man. I didn't mean nothing there. I'm being stupid, you know? Anyway, no chance of me hanging up my roller, you know? I need the money. No, you don't. <laughs> what? Well, your Auntie Margaret's going to leave you ten grand in her will. She wrote you a letter, sure. How'd you know that, Tony? You tell me. No, I didn't. Oh, you did. No, I didn't. Oh, you did. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> What's he here tonight, you know? Aye, some kid on film premiere. Aye. What is it, some poxy European initiative? Some daily record pish. Here, there's that arse off he take the high road. <laughs> he's pish. What is his wee pal out of thing with practice? Aye, ah, he's rotten and all. Oh, hear that butt off the news. She's rank. The Muriel Grey. She's on. Oh, aye, me. How's it going, Blondie? Ah, oh, she has been seen us. Aye, she did. Skag! Oh, here's that old tangent of Dr. Finley. <laughs> the size he is, he that's deformed! <laughs> I did for a part of this push. I was up for a part of Danny. Oh, the alcoholic ex-boxer. Nah, the unemployed welder. Script was a turkey. I know. I read for man in car park. Ah, well, the dates would have probably clashed with the Air United story anyway at the gate, you know. See, these monkeys, they just don't live in the real world. <gasps> you and McGregor! Oh, Ian! The work must be felt drying up for you in the States if you're showing face at this key! <laughs> mm. Nice end of show jumper. You too, my friend, you Thank too. Thank you. What's this? Well, my hungry chumster, it's a cake. Mm. We're celebrating what exactly? We're celebrating having three shows under were belts. Under were belts, mm -hmm. eh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What sort of cake is it? Chocolate gatooks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I mean, I don't, make, I don't mean to make you look like an idiot or anything, but I think you'll find it's gâteau. Gâteau? Yeah. Oh, I see, right. Yeah, the X is silent. I thought with your French-Canadian connection, you would have known that. Gâteau. So it's gâteau as opposed to gatooks. That's right. All oh, right, OK, cool, cool. So is it finished? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Good. To me. Hey, 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 easy, 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 fella. Easy, easy. Now. easy. Oh, wait, it's for later. Come, Come on, now. Get off it! Come here! Oh, oh bottle! Good night. <laughs> That's good. Look, could we please have our weapons back? We have to be in Fergus Street Park at one o'clock. Well, can we take it off his in your door, man? Aye, aye. Come aye. Ahead. Come on in your walloper. Yeah. Come ahead, man. Come ahead. Oi. Huh? Oi. Well done, lads. Right. It's, right. it. it's a flatten. Oh, no. Sorry. <laughs>